Welcome to AM 8.0. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I have to say something about Gail, though, before I continue here. It's, uh, she's gotten off to an incredibly fast start, and we are absolutely thrilled to have her at the helm of the ARF, and um, so we're, we're looking forward to a, a tremendous future with Gail Fugit in charge here, um, and I think you can already recognize the changes. Uh, particularly with uh, what she has planned over the next two days. Anyway, it's an honor to kick off this conference. The theme, as you've seen all around you, uh, is measuring the unmeasured, which when you think about it is really about apply applying new thinking and innovation to our measurement challenges. And this is mostly about following the consumer, right? From a media perspective, from an advertising perspective, uh, over the past couple of decades, we've fallen further and further behind in terms of audience measurement. Now, with that theme, following the consumer, measuring the unmeasured, I think that what we are about to share, Glenn and I, regarding our partnership with Comscore and Arbitron, I think certainly lives up to that theme. With the introduction, uh, just a little bit of background, with the introduction of our ESPN XP initiative back in 2010, our primary goal for that initiative was to move cross-platform measurement from custom project to standard practice. Now, it's taken a while, but I think we're nearly there. And the project that I think will get us there is what we call Project Blueprint. I'm gonna give you some background on the project and tell you how it works, and then uh, Glenn is going to come up here and share some early results, literally days old from our project so far. So let's get started. Now, Blueprint is unique in that it utilizes a hybrid methodology based on fundamentally uh, two pilot projects that were initially funded by SIM back in 2011 and 2012. Both of these were conducted by Comscore and Arbitron. Now, at ESPN, we paid close attention to this, and each of these pilots demonstrated aspects of cross-platform measurement that we felt, in combination, could meet the needs at ESPN to measure multiple content types across five platforms. More importantly, we felt that this approach could, in fact, provide the scale and granularity to meet the needs of the industry. We weren't interested in creating another proprietary measurement system. We wanted to create something that we felt that the industry could adopt as well. And specifically, this was about filling the void and knowledge gaps about how people use content across platforms on an ongoing basis. So after coming to a collaborative agreement back in September 2012, ESPN, Arbitron, and Comscore announced this ambitious initiative to measure display, video, and audio content across five platforms on a continuous basis. The goal was to build the first iteration of this national cross-platform measurement system by summer of 2013. And I can tell you, remarkably, that after just nine months, I'm pleased to say that we are nearly there. Really a remarkable achievement. And I will say up front how impressed I have been with the collaborative effort made by both companies to get this done. They did it by combining proven existing single source methods and then integrating them into a five platform data set, a virtual single source measurement system that can also expand and improve as time goes on, kind of future proof as I see it today. So here's how it works. So at the core of Project Blueprint, are, it's simple. It's the best sources of measurement for each of the five platforms that are available from Arbitron and Comscore. So for television, we combine set-top box or return path data from Comscore with demographic viewing information from Arbitron's PPM. And in addition, from the PPM, Arbitron will be pro providing information on out-of-home television viewing. So complete total television viewing measurement. For radio, of course, we rely on the Arbitron PPM. And then finally, for digital, Comscore will be supplying usage from their unified data measurement technique, otherwise known as UDM, which combines tag census data for, for, uh, from websites and the data from their digital panels. So uh, across all of these platforms, we have very, very good sources on an individual basis. Now, Within the measurement sources for each platform are existing single source capabilities to measure duplication, proven single source capabilities. So for example, on the left hand side here, we've got radio and TV data. They've been measuring cross platform for radio and TV data for some time coming from the Arbitron PPM. And on the right hand side, we've got PC, smartphone and tablet coming from Comscore's Media Metrics multi-platform service, which has been in use now since January. Now, in addition, at the center here, to provide necessary scale for television, 
Comscore is now maintaining a panel of roughly four and a half million set-top box households distributed across nine census regions. Now data from these households are integrated with the Arbitron PPM data to provide demographic profiles of television, audience, television audiences and estimates of out-of-home television viewing. At the same time, those set-top box homes are also integrated with Comscore's media metrics and mobile metrics panels to provide robust measures of duplication across television and digital. Now, next, a critical aspect of the integration process is a separate, pure, single-source calibration panel that will inform the model to integrate all five platforms on a nationally representative basis. And this calibration panel is built from a subset of panelists from Arbitron's national PPM panel. Now, we are already getting perfectly good digital, census level digital data produced by Comscore, but the challenge was how do we link these PPM panelists to Comscore's UD UDM data set? So Arbitron went out and created a unique solution just for Blueprint, which is called the Link Meter. Now, the link meter is not a data collection device. Instead, it allows any digital device of a PPM panelist to be connected to data that Comscore is already collecting. It's installed on all digital devices and sends a cookie to Comscore to identify that device and user. On a PC, the link meter will track IP, the IP address of the router. For mobile devices, it runs as a background app. It checks activity every 30 seconds, sending tags for new or ending app activity and ultimately enabling Comscore to link all digital activity back to the panelists, enabling single source measurement of radio, television, PC, phone, and tablet. So here is a review of our single source data sets and then how we uh, bring it all together. First, we've got TV and radio data coming from Arbitron's PPM panel. Second, We've got PC, smartphone, tablet data for, coming from Comscore's media metrics, multi-platform census data. TV and PC data, uh, duplication from 35,000 Comscore panelists within set-top box households, so linking TV and PC usage within those uh, digital set-top box homes. And in addition, TV, PC, smartphone, and tablet duplication data are coming from a subset of those TV, uh, uh, PC set-top box homes. Uh, and these are homes that have Wi-Fi enabled, and so we can connect those devices together uh, at the router. And then number five, the calibration panel. And this will provide single source measurement of all five platforms in the end, providing the ability to integrate all data sets on a continuous basis and on a nationally representative basis. This is how we put it all together. So here's a quick review of our progress to date after nine very quick and busy months. Uh, first, as I was describing, our sources of data for TV, radio, and the three digital platforms, individual data sets are in place. In March, uh, Arbitron completed recruiting for the calibration panel. This is up and running. And um, I described four different elements within the data integration process, uh, otherwise known as our dupli duplication edge. And to date, three of these are complete for TV plus PC, PC smartphone, tablet, and TV digital. And then the occlusion of radio in the integration process will come with the next step in the next few weeks. That's what's completed in terms of the next steps um, that we have remaining and are well underway. Uh, first of all, critical is the integration of the calibration panel into the duplication engine to enable five-way duplication with the inclusion of radio. And then finally, there is the completion of a user interface uh, to allow us to analyze the data beyond the incredibly large Excel spreadsheets we've been getting over the last few weeks. Um, so clearly, all of this is pretty complex, but at the same time, I think a pretty elegant solution. And although we haven't completed the integration of the calibration panel just yet, we were able to report for you today preliminary data for ESPN content across four different platforms. So to review that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Glenn Enoch, who is Vice President of Integrated Media Research at ESPN and the lead on this project. Welcome, Glenn.
Thanks, Artie. You know, it's entirely appropriate that we're bringing you the first data from this project to an ARF conference, because three years ago, in March, at the ARF Rethink Conference, we announced our ESP and XP initiative, which encompassed all the work we were doing and, and has all the work we've done since on cross-platform research. The first objective of ESP and XP, as already told you, was to help turn cross-platform research from a special project to a standard practice. Standard practice meaning we could use it 365 days a year, and I think we also hope that you could use it 365 days a year. Three years ago this month, the Journal of Advertising Research published a paper written by myself and Kelly Johnson reviewing our cross-platform research to that point, and in it, we talked about the importance of using both single source and data integration methodologies. We described our analytical methods, and we talked about the seven principles of cross-platform research that we had derived from our work, and which we're still using, as you'll see. We conceived of Project Blueprint as the fulfillment of everything that we proposed in 2010. Continuous electronic measurement of all our content, as well as total media use, using both single source and data integration. And our first look at the data, which I'm gonna share with you now, indicates that we're on the right path to measuring the unmeasured with Project Blueprint. So, here we go. So let's start with users of, of ESPN content and counting our users. The data from Project Blueprint enable us to measure the total reach of our content across TV and digital platforms on a weekly and monthly basis. These preliminary February results show that in the course of a month, we reached 136 million adults and 84 million men, over half of all US adults and 72% of US men were reached by ESPN content. Now an important capability of this data set is the ability to measure reach lift over time. And in this example, our monthly reach of adults is 71% greater than our weekly reach. And ultimately, we're gonna have the ability to build reach and frequency tables for combinations of cross-platform exposure, which we consider essential for a cross-platform planning tool. Our specifications for Project Blueprint included the ability to take our total cross-platform reach, which I just showed you, and segment our audience by all combinations of media exposure. So on the left is a table showing our monthly reach by segment. Of the 136 million adults who are exposed to our content, 118.9 million watched us on TV, 29.1 million were using a PC, 23.8 million were using a smartphone, and 4.1 million were using our content on a tablet. So that's one tremendous finding right there. Our exposure on mobile platforms is virtually equal to our exposure on PCs. Now four platforms produce 15 unique exposure segments, and, and these are sized in the column on the left. So for example, of the 23.8 million people who used our content on a smartphone, 5.7 million only used the smartphone and none of the other platforms. 9.2 million were exposed on TV and smartphone. 1.7 million were exposed on PC and smartphone and, and so forth. So when radio is added to the project shortly, we'll be looking at 31 exposure segments and we'll be looking for differences by demo, by day part, and by month as we cover different sports. All right, having broken our users into discrete exposure segments, we can then roll them back up in any combination we want. And in this case, we're looking at people that only watched us on TV, people who only used our digital platforms, and people who watched us on TV and used at least one digital platform. And what we see in February is that two-thirds of adults and two-fifths of men were watching us on TV only, and so about a third of adults and two-fifths of men were using our digital platforms. In the average week, a large portion of these digital platform users were only exposed on the digital platform. And so from this data set, we can see that in the average week, 18 to 23% lift by our digital platforms over our TV reach alone, and 15 to 16% lift in reach over TV in the average month to our digital platforms. One of the most exciting capabilities of Project Blueprint is that we can look at tablet users and see how they interact with other media platforms. Um, I showed you earlier that about 4 million adults, 4.1 million adults, uh, consumed ESPN content on a tablet. And in this chart, we see that about a quarter of tablet-using adults and 21% of tablet-using adult men only consumed our content in the average week. And even after uh, four weeks, 10 to 15% of tablet users were tablet only. So Project Blueprint is going to enable us to track these users as penetration of tablets increases. And we're going to be able to see the degree to which users choose one device over another and which combinations of devices are important for specific kinds of content. 
We can learn a lot by looking at shared and exclusive users of media content, but it's just as important to look at their usage. As our paper on the seven principles pointed out, you need to know how many people engage in a specific behavior and also how long they do so, but these metrics are not interchangeable. How many tells you about combinations of platform reach, but how long tells you about engagement, and it also tells you about how the user groups are allocating their time, which may translate into how likely they are to be exposed to advertising. So uh, in this slide, we're looking at the multi-platform user, the person that's using more than one platform, and how they're dividing their time in the average week. And what we see is that adult multi-platform users are spending 21% of their time on digital media and about two-thirds of their digital minutes on PCs, where adult male multi-platform users are spending a larger proportion of their time, 25%, on digital platforms and a larger proportion of that time spent on mobile platforms. Uh, one consistent finding of our ESP and XP research is that the multi-platform user spends more time with our content. And on this table, we've divided our users into two groups, those who are using just one platform, which, which could be TV or it could be a single digital platform, and multi-platform users who are using two or more platforms. So what you see here is that 23% of uh, our adults are multi-platform users and 27% of adult males are multi-platform users, but they're doing 41 to 44% of all the usage of our content because they're averaging over 10 hours with ESPN content in this month, over twice as much as the single platform users. We also found that the more platforms a person uses, the more time they spend with our content. So here you see that the two platform users are spending eight hours with our content, the three platform users 16 hours, and the small group of people who used all four platforms are spending 38 to 39 hours in a month with ESPN content. It's like a work week. I guess it's like their job to watch ESPN. <laughs> so we know that the multi-platform user spends more time with our content, and Project Blueprint also gets to tell us how the users are allocating their time. So the adult, in this case, who's only watching us on TV, spent five hours and 14 minutes watching, where the adult who watches on TV and uses one or two or all three digital platforms spent much more time with our content, not only because they're spending that extra digital time, but because they're watching us on TV for more time as well. This corresponds to another one of our seven principles, that the heavy user is a heavy user. The person who's more engaged with our content is more likely to be a multi-platform user and more likely to spend more time with all of our platforms. And this concept of the multi-platform user spending more time with our content extends to the person who uses more than one digital platform. Here you see that the two-device user spends four to five as much time with our digital content as the one-device user, and the three-device user spends three times as much as the two-device user. Again, we're very excited by the capability that Project Blueprint gives us to look at tablet users, and it, and it turns out that they're our best customers. The average tablet user spends over 19 hours per month with ESPN content. They spend more time with TV and more time with digital than any of the other groups that you see up here. And a more general finding, which is uh, the two uh, columns that are on the right, uh, is that the smartphone and tablet users, the mobile user, are heavier users of our content than the TV and PC users. So as sports fans acquire more digital, uh, more mobile devices, that presents us with an opportunity to spend even more time with them. Also, as already mentioned, we'll soon be seeing the fully integrated duplication engine as the calibration panel is added to the mix, and this will allow for five-platform duplication, and we'll also add radio to our TV digital platform combinations. And we've looked at the calibration panel data and we know some of the ways that this is going to affect our February data set. For one thing, it's going to add even more reach to the ESPN content. The radio-only user is going to add about 7% to the 136 million adults who are watching us on TV or are using our digital platforms. We also expect to see 21% more total time spent with our content. Uh, radio is an important medium for sports fans, and they spend a lot of time listening, which is why we needed a five-platform duplication in the first place. We're also going to find out how radio listeners interact with the other platforms. Our initial look at the calibration panel indicates that radio listeners are even more likely than TV viewers to interact with our digital platforms, so there's some interesting synergies that we're going to be able to explore there. We made it clear when we announced Project Blueprint that we did not consider it to be a currency. We needed, and we felt that the industry needed, electronic measurement of content across multiple platforms. Content providers need this to understand changing behavior in the face of increasing digital usage, and advertisers and agencies need this to better inform their media planning. However, 
if our data on usage and users was completely different than the existing measures, then Project Blueprint wouldn't be very useful for ESPN or, or for anybody else. But as it turns out, our data align very closely with these other measures. So first, let's look at TV. Our average TV audience, our average audience measures were within 10% of the benchmark TV measures. And for weekly reach, it was even closer. We were within 2% of our adult reach. We also looked at the distribution of digital minutes. Here, what we did was we took all the minutes spent with our digital content from our server logs, and we divided it into people that were using our content on a PC, on a smartphone, and on a tablet, and, and created those proportions. And we did the same thing with the Project Blueprint data. And as you can see, the Project Blueprint data set is virtually identical to our server traffic for the same period. So if we feel great about the TV data, and we feel great about the digital data so far. But we're also comparing the cross-platform data from Project Blueprint to findings from other projects that we've executed under the ESPN XP umbrella. And in this chart, we're looking at digital lift, so digital-only users over TV reach, for five projects that we did during 2011 and 2010 on uh, first the World Cup and then on NFL and college football during 2010 and 2011. Now, we saw digital lift in all of these projects, and we saw more digital lift in 2011 than we saw in 2010, but the reach lift from Project Blueprint was twice as high as these other studies, which gave us a bit of pause. But then we looked at the digital lift by PC and mobile users separately, and what we found was that the lift from PC users in Project Blueprint was very similar to what we'd seen in the other five studies, but the lift from mobile users was much higher. And we think that this is an accurate reflection of the increase in mobile penetration and usage over the past two years. So we're very excited by the data that we're getting out of Project Blueprint and what it tells us about ESPN content users and their usage. We're going to be getting usage on total media very shortly, and we're going to find some way to share that with the industry as well. Our goal with Project Blueprint was to create the industry's first nationally projectable, five-platform, continuously operating, brand-inclusive, integrated media solution. It's too early to put up the Mission Accomplished banner, but we're very encouraged by what we've seen so far. And Artie's going to now tell you about the next steps for Project Blueprint for this summer and perhaps beyond. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, so here's where we are right now um, and where we're headed. Um, this is what we're going to be doing all summer, folks. Um, First step is to finish integrating the calibration panel into the duplication engine, a uh, critical aspect of Project Blueprint. Completion of the user interface um, so that we can access the data more elegantly. And then we'll be spending a lot of time uh, between now and the end of July uh, focusing uh, less on sort of day part levels but more on program and entity or event level data um, as we continue to analyze these data over the next uh, several months. Uh, looking ahead, other things that we'll have to pay attention to um, after we get this, uh, this uh, base level of, of measurement accomplished is uh, to look at time-shifted viewing, um, to look at campaign or commercial level measurement as well across all these platforms, and more importantly, <clears throat> to generate interest among you, among the industry, because we really need industry support uh, to move this ahead um, and take it to the next level. I will close by saying that after observing the development of this product over just nine months and reviewing what I think are really impressive early findings, at least from our perspective, I believe that Blueprint can certainly meet the needs of the industry on an ongoing basis, providing scalable cross-platform measurement solutions. If you're interested and you want to learn more, please contact your Arbitron or ComScore representative for more details. And it gives me great pleasure to actually introduce one of those representatives, Mr. Jan Fulgoni, executive chairman and co-founder of Comscore, just to close with a few words. And then if we have some time, we'll take some questions. Jan? So um, good morning, everybody. And uh, it's great to be back at another uh, AM8. Um, so. I was delighted, as you can imagine, uh, by the results of, uh, of this study to date. And I, I want to thank ESPN. I want to thank Artie and Glenn and uh, the Optron folks, Joan Fitzgerald and the Comscore team for all the hard work that they put into uh, to developing uh, this service. Uh, I also want to compliment ESPN on the leadership that they've exhibited 
for years now in uh, leading their company into this brave new digital world, as we call it, because sports content is the most heavily consumed across all of the platforms that consumers can use today. And uh, I think that ESPN has done an incredible job of extending their brand across all of these platforms. The service that we've developed, as you saw, leverages some radically new thinking about how to build out the media measurement systems of the future that we need. And interestingly, uh, and to me personally, this is really interesting because I spent a lot of my career working with panels. And I think I, I understand pretty well at this point the power of panels, but also uh, their limitations. And so what we try to do here is to take the best of panels, combine it with the new availability of big data, census data, that's going to be discussed here at the conference today, and put it all together into a uh, integrated, a very elegantly integrated system that will uh, provide the, the, the metrics that we need going forward. Personally speaking, um, I have, over my 40 years in, in market research, uh, been fortunate to have been involved in, uh, in helping lead two transitions that were technologically driven. In, in the 80s and 90s, it was the advent of scanning. And then in the past decade, it was um, the internet. And I, I think I've seen the challenges and the opportunities that these technological dislocations can create and how if you don't embrace the change, if you don't embrace the change, that will happen. Uh, but uh, if you do, you can gain a competitive advantage. And uh, you know, if you look back at the, the, the advent of scanning, uh, all of the tools that were developed allowed CPG manufacturers to confidently spend an additional $40 billion of promotional money um, uh, against the, the retailers and the consumer than they had been doing before. Uh, a lot of companies got a competitive advantage uh, as a result of those changes. In the last decade, with the internet, I don't need to tell you the litany of uh, challenges that occurred and how industries suffered, you know, from the music industry to the uh, newspaper industry, the challenges for retailers, et cetera. So to me, um, I've seen firsthand the challenges and the opportunities that changes um, uh, in technology can create. I personally then think that we are at the cusp of maybe the biggest change that we have encountered, uh, certainly in living memory. And it's all driven, uh, to my way of thinking, by this thing. So this phone. So if this, think of it this way. If this had been available in 1985, it would have been the most powerful computer in the world that you could have bought. There are now 1.6 billion people wandering around this planet with this in their pocket, which I think points to the, to the challenge and the opportunity. And so we have to have the measurement systems that can operate at scale that then allow the measurement of content consumption within device and across device, taking account of the unduplicated uh, audiences. Um, if I wanted um, confirmation of the importance of that, um, uh, two weeks ago I spoke at Procter & Gamble's Digital Day down in Cincinnati and um, listened to Mark Pritchard, their CMO, talk about the importance of following the consumer. And you heard Gail talk about it this morning, the importance of following the consumer and understanding how the consumer today uh, is consuming content across all of these devices. That's the challenge and also the opportunity. And I think that if we embrace the challenge, support the development of these new systems, you could argue we will enter a golden age of media and media measurement. Maybe we're in the golden age of media already. Certainly from the consumer perspective, uh, I think we're there. The consumer can um, view and read content wherever, whenever, and however they want. And if we as an advertising industry don't understand how that pattern of behavior is evolving and changing, I don't think we're going to be able to maximize the opportunities for our industry. On the other hand, uh, if we embrace the development of these new, of these new systems, then I think uh, the returns are going to be there. And the golden age of media will refer not just to the consumers, but to the advertisers, the publishers, and the agencies, and the research companies, and the whole industry. So 
In closing, let me again thank ESPN, thank Arbitron, and thank uh, the Comscore folks for everything they've done. And we look forward to working with the rest of the industry here as we go forward with this really exciting project. Thank you. And I, I encourage thank you, Jan. Thank you very much. <clears throat> And uh, we've run out of time, but I encourage you, if you have any questions, if you have any interest, want to find out more, uh, we have um, important representatives from Arbitron and Comscore here. Um, happy to answer your questions, um, and I thank you for your time and attention.